In this video, we'll have a look at the general capabilities of Tutor Tims. There's a vast selection of modules to choose from. You pick and place them. Here I've taken a simple phase shifter, a master signals module. You can place them, remove them, and join them up by clicking on the terminals. As well, you can save your experiments and then load them. So we have ready-made experiments. There are very many to choose from uh, if required. Here, for example, we have amplitude modulation, where we are adding DC to an audio message and multiplying it by the carrier. Uh, we are able to make adjustments to all the relevant levels and take measurements uh, of all the characteristics and parameters, uh, all in real time. So uh, you can see there the time domain, you have four channels to choose from, uh, all the typical digital scope measurement tools, cursor boxes, um, RMS measurements, uh, frequency spectrum is easily turned on for each channel, triggering is available, uh, the spectrum is derived from the time domain, uh, windowing is available, so you can improve the quality of the spectrum. Here you can see the AM spectrum, and as we vary the frequency of the message, you can see the sidebands uh, widening, the bandwidth widening and narrowing uh, all in real time. It's a very convenient uh, learning tool and students can take measurements and confirm all the relevant, the relevant performance um, of the system in their own time. The scope is very convenient in that uh, you can move the channels around, switch them on and off, accumulate them, trigger on them, uh, etc. Average, um, everything that uh, is convenient. Now, if we AC couple the multipliers inputs, we remove the DC from the incoming uh, signal, we end up with DSB, which we just saw. Now let's pop up another ready-made experiment. Um, you can just place these experiments and then delete them or modify them at, at will. They're just a convenient starting point. Uh, or they can be treated as the answer for the student. Uh, here we're varying some of the pulses that are used to do some sampling. Of course, triggering is very important. Uh, students need to understand uh, why the signal slips and what they need to trigger on, uh, etc. Uh, as well, in this experiment, you can view the... Um, the frequency spectrum and thus get an insight, a theoretical insight as to um, the sampling um, theorem, Nyquist theorem, etc, etc. Uh, here we uh, have averaging on the spectrum which allows you to get a nice clean um, um, a resultant of the spectrum. Let's load up a different experiment now. Uh, scrolling through some of the options which are available to the professor here we have pulse amplitude modulation and time division um, multiplexing. So here we have two input frequencies, 2K and an audio oscillator frequency. Um, you can vary the width of the pulse and you know, take measurements of the spectrum to see the relationship mathematically of the pulse width and the spectrum. Uh, uh, vary the delay between the control pulses going to the dual analog switch. All of these modules are elementary circuit blocks or mathematical blocks which you can use to build a more complex telecommunications system. Here we have loaded up BPSK uh, plus demodulation. And what's great about this is you can zoom in uh, on the transitions, the phase transitions. Uh, you can also view the baseband. Um, you can vary the phase relationship at the receiver uh, of the carrier and the recovered signal. And by varying that phase relationship, you can see the impact it has on the magnitude of the recovered signal. This, this brings to life the whole concept of phasors and recovery and phase relationships. Remember, telecommunications is about manipulating amplitude, frequency and phase of signals uh, to transmit information. Uh, we vary the bandwidth of the, of the um, carrier rejection filter. We can look at the spectrum. Basically, all the, all the insights to the system are available for students to study. 
So BPSK is a very uh, simple experiment, uh, a bipolar message multiplied by a carrier. And uh, later on, we can have a look at more complex systems. For example, let's load up QPSK now. <clears throat> we'll go straight to demodulation, just because this is just a quick overview. Normally, students would place these modules and make the connections themselves. Here we're looking at two different messages uh, on two quadrature carriers, X and Y, um, digital message coming through on two different carriers. And once again, um, by changing the phase relationship at the, recover, at the receiver, you're able to basically tune in one message or another message. So just like with uh, quadrature, any kind of quadrature scheme, by varying the carrier phase relative to the incoming signal. <clears throat> there, we've, here, we've, for instance, we've recovered the blue original message as the yellow signal. <clears throat> now let's have a look at <clears throat> a different message and adjust the phase accordingly. Make, make an adjustment. Notice the phase doesn't have any measurements. Students need to measure the phase themselves. They need to switch between the carriers, etc. Zoom in closely and take measurements and then jot these down in their lab report. Okay, here we have recovered the Y message. Right, let's move on. <clears throat> We're just having a very quick look. Okay, constant envelope schemes are of great interest. Uh, we have a module known as the Pion 4 DPSK, QPSK, MSK module <clears throat> and demodulator. Here we're looking at pi on 4 differential QPSK. We also can view the recovered signal as XY and thus look at the constellation. Here we're looking at offset QPSK, once again as a constellation, um, the familiar four-point constellation. We look at MSK, which uses um, sinusoids, half sinusoids as the symbol. Looking at it, uh, it forms a circle, as expected, <clears throat> with four points. And um, of course, you can add noise to the channel. You can band limit the channel. And by doing so, you distort the recovered signals. You distort the recovered constellation. And you come to understand the relevance of the sampling point in time in order to recover the signal with as few errors as possible. OK, that's quite a complicated uh, sophisticated experiment, <clears throat> but you can take it even further. You can actually add bit error rate measurements to your system. So you can control the signal to noise ratio uh, in the channel, <clears throat> um, take measurements of that, and then measure the amount of errors expressed as a fraction of the number of clock cycles received. And step by step, a student can develop a table of signal to noise versus bit error rate measurements and then plot that table in their lab report to confirm their understanding. Okay, a really interesting modulation scheme is delta modulation. <coughs> uh, it's used in analog to digital converters. Uh, it is basically a very simple concept. It's made up of an integrator, a limiter and a sampler. We contain those blocks, and by wiring up the blocks appropriate, appropriately, you're able to see the delta modulated signal, and you're able to recover the signal. You can vary the sampling rate, you increase the quantization error. Um, but delta, sigma, delta um, modulation is, is um, one configuration. By changing the orientation <coughs> of our blocks, or adding in new modules, we can look at other schemes. Here we're looking at a multi-tone input signal. The benefit of that is you can see differing um, rates of change on the input and look at the attack and the tracking of the modulation. Let's have a look at now um, delta sigma modulation. It uses the same blocks but reorientated. So different wiring, um, a different quantization type signal um, and um, it has its benefits uh, and students can study uh, the implications and the recovery of this modulation scheme. <clears throat>
it's also possible to um, do adaptive um, delta modulation. Um, so that's uh, available on that module as well. Okay, now we'll jump to some signals and systems modules. Uh, there's a, a variety of signals and systems modules, continuous time and discrete time modules. Here we are looking at discrete time Z transform bi quad. And the bi quad module has been used uh, to implement some poles and zeros. Uh, 